to worship you only King of kings, Lion of Judah
clap our hands to give you the glory we clap our hands to give you the praise and we will praise you for the rest of our days yes we will praise you for the rest of our days uh, we clap our hands in the we clap our hands to give you the glory we clap our hands to give you the praise and we will praise you for the rest of our days we clap our hands We clap our hands To give you the glory To give you the praise And we will praise you for the rest of our days yes. We will praise you for the rest of our days Jesus, Jesus We give you the praise Emmanuel the mighty name of Jesus and I want you just to open your mouth and begin just to praise the Lord in the name of Jesus father we thank you today thank you for your grace thank you for your presence thank you for who you are in the mighty name of Jesus we worship you Lord we acknowledge your Lordship we acknowledge who you are in the name of Jesus we bless you you we bless you lord we honor you we honor you king of glory we worship you this day we worship you this day we worship you this day in the name of jesus we exalt you king of glory in the name of jesus i want you to lift your hand above your head and give the lord a shout of praise in the name of jesus give the lord a shout of praise give the lord a shout of praise give the lord a shout of praise in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus. Mine is briefly, I just don't want you to sit because we're going to transition to the word through worship in the name of Jesus in a few minutes. We acknowledge each and every one of you for coming here today. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, Karibu Sana. Tell the other one, welcome to the Young Ministers Forum and Conference. It is good to know their names so that you don't sit next to a stranger. Hallelujah. Do you know their names in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. I've, I was trying to see the list. Maybe we will acknowledge you a bit later. Um, the Lord shall bless you. For that I've come from different places. So many pastors have already registered. We welcome Life Church Georgia. We welcome Shalom Ministry. If I mention that, just appreciate. We welcome many from Apostolic House. We welcome many from Life Church Gashia. We welcome Acts of God, Full Gospel. We welcome Life Church Limuru. And we appreciate so many pastors that have registered right now. Pastors, and I know a few pastors are here. So it is that kind of a meeting where wherever you are seated is the front. <laughs> Hallelujah. We acknowledge your coming today. May the Lord bless you. Even before we transition to worship, what I was thinking is about the relay. How many of you have seen the 4x4 relays? And I believe we are in that kind of a moment where there is a passing on of a baton. Hallelujah. But the first and the second shall wait for the ones that are taking the baton to run the race the right way. Hallelujah. Because their victory is dependent on how they take the baton and how they run the race. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, take the baton well and run the race well hallelujah do not be the person when you angusha the baton this is the generation that is taking the next baton by the grace of god so that they can run the race and cope 
corporately get the victory the victory is not for the person who has won the race the one who entered or the one who crossed the line the victory is for a team hallelujah and we are part of that team that the lord is raising by the grace of god so that we can run the race in the matters of ministry and bring victory to the lamb of god hallelujah in the name of jesus let's give the lord a shout of praise in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah we acknowledge our father in the faith and the visionary for the young ministers forum may the lord bless you and we thank you for thinking of us let's appreciate the lord for apostle david Juma in the name of jesus and pastor sunta in absentia we just want to get into a moment of worship and at that point in time apostle will take over by the grace of god hallelujah may the lord bless you Told you I will exalt you I will exalt you You are my God Come on church just sing and say your voice lift your hands and say I will exalt you I will exalt you I will exalt you you are my God you are my God come on sing it one more time say I will
deliverer. He's our king. And Lord, even as we are out there in the field, we will stand on the promise that you are always with us. You are our friend and king. You are our friend and king. You are our hiding place. You are our safe refuge. Oh God, we will trust in you.
your presence is right here, right now. We give you praise. We give you glory. I want you to open up your spirit. I'm going to ask God to give us three major spirits in this one day forum. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of revelation. Actually four. The spirit of understanding. For the little spirit of knowledge. May these anointings rest upon us today. So that whatever we hear, whatever we interact with, we will have divine encounter. This is not an event. This is a place where we are meeting with our King. Lord, I pray now in Jesus' name, give us a spirit of wisdom. And I release it in this house right now. I'll the same spirit online in the name of Jesus. I also release the spirit of revelation. I declare the eyes of understanding are open now in the name of Jesus to see it. I'll release the spirit of understanding, the expansion of our heart to know things in a better way. I'll release the spirit of knowledge. Father, the more we have knowledge of Christ, the more we grow in grace. I pray today we will never be the same again. Jesus, may this be your meeting. You know who is who here, who is who where. Do wonders in our midst. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And God's people shout amen. Hallelujah. Are you happy God's people to be here this morning? You are welcome in the apostolic house. Glory to God. Uh, smile at somebody I don't know whether you want to greet them and tell them it's good to see each one of you thank you worship team for doing a good job with the pastor Linda thank you very much in the mighty name of Jesus glory to God in the highest uh, we acknowledge all of you and even those that are online can we appreciate all those who are online in Jesus name today's Friday Passover is a special moment glory to God and uh, you may be seated we want you to know that uh, we felt in the morning, uh, what we are sharing, we also place it on Elevate TV. We are live right now on Elevate TV, and to God be the glory. And secondly, uh, we are also live on uh, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, so uh, let me just ask you to take 60 seconds, go to your phone, uh, YouTube on Apostle David Juma on YouTube. Uh, I know, you know, it's a page that probably you haven't interacted with. Uh, we have revived it. So go to Apostle David Juma on YouTube, pick the link. Uh, and I'm sure somebody else can put it on the Young Ministers Forum. You can pick it from there. Uh, on WhatsApp, share on your page. Then on Facebook, Apostle David Juma, pick it up, share it on your wall, let's saturate. We welcome those who are watching online. We would want to ask you, men and brethren, uh, let us know which areas you're watching from. Keep writing notes for us. Some of you are very faithful in doing that. Uh, I'm open to the Holy Spirit to see what he's going to do. Praise the name of Jesus. And I acknowledge all of you, uh, Pastor Peter Talam, for, uh, and your team, the associate ministers in the house, organizing, helping us. That was a blessing. And uh, I've seen my friend, uh, Pastor Francis, Mido and your wife, what a joy. God bless you. Thank you for being here, sir. We believe it will be a blessing and uh, uh, all the other brothers that are here and Pastor Otas, the youth pastor in the house, the Lord bless you. Uh, if I keep mentioning them, I'll go all the way up to very late. All of you feel appreciated. Wherever you are seated is in front. Some of you I know in your church you sit in front. So just, uh, just for now, just assume wherever you're seated is where? Is in front. Praise God. Now, we're not here teaching you because we know a lot or we are the best. No. Uh, we're just here because we are brother's keeper. I have a burden, I have a ministry to be a blessing to this generation. And uh, almost 20 years ago, I got a prophetic word. Uh, just switch off this for me. I got a prophetic word 20 years ago. I like roasting in his presence. Uh, you know, I'm, or else, wow, okay, wow. Just, why we not scared about the mistake? Uh, I learned in the crusades when you, when the wind is coming towards me to make me lose my voice. So I like being hot. Praise God. So many years ago, God spoke to me, said, a time is coming, the younger generation will be coming to you asking 
that you mentor them, that you father them. So when uh, after some years, like the last 10 years, it's been very, very amazing. Almost every two weeks, I have an average of two or three ministers contacting me saying, can I follow? Can I be part of what you're doing? Can I, you know, be mentored by you? And it's never easy because you can only physically uh, disciple. Jesus only selected 12. You know, if he selected 500, he, there's nothing else he would have done other than solving problems, cooking for them, you know, and do, you, multiplying bread, <laughs> you know, uh, them getting stuck in the, in the in Sea of Galilee. He, he's so tired, he's asleep. They have to wake him up, all that kind of thing. However, I ask God for wisdom. So one of the things I do, uh, I usually, when young people or older people ask me to mentor them, I don't say no because God said it before. I only tell somebody, it's up to you to follow. I'm on the move, and I'm always on the move. Follow me wherever I go, if you can. And because it's not possible also to follow, because you don't know which matatu have entered. <laughs> Some of you are not getting the joke. I know you have had no coffee. So, uh, <laughs> forums like these are necessary so that now I can speak to you individually in the midst of others. So tell your neighbor, may you hear for yourself. Praise the Lord. And so we are grateful. We also have other forums we call uh, Pastors and Ministers Empowerment Seminar once a month. And so this month of March, we haven't done it because this one is running. But April, we'll have it to the third Tuesday of the month. And then, of course, the main conference in July, Standing Strong Ministers Conference. This year is going to the next level. We're looking for a venue to place a tent. We trust God for 3,000 pastors and leaders gathering together. Amen. And uh, so that's another forum where you can learn and we have opportunity to speak to you. Plus, my friends can also speak to you. Amen. And then the apostolic schools of ministry I take in different parts of the city. Thank God now we have platforms called social media. So it's possible to kind of every week hear what the Lord is helping me share. Are we together? And uh, I'm sure many of you can testify you have been blessed. Sinasawa. Atakama, you are, you are usually very quiet, you don't tell me. Sutapta tunji yako niambia. Although sipo niambia, mina juo mebarikiwa. Ushuda yako tutakutana nao binguni na juo bana mekujenga. Are we together? So to God be the glory for that. And there are even people from other nations and we trust God that they, they too will be impacted because uh, everywhere I go, it's like people say, uh, please uh, mentor us. I'm also being mentored by others. That's a, it's a cycle. Amen? I, I have to keep reading, learning, you know, listening, studying, so that I can also keep growing. For everybody is under construction. I'm still being constructed by God. How many of you know Jesus is a builder? It looks like those announcements are already points. The way I'm going, Jesus looks like those announcements uh, comments are like points so uh, then in December we do a family camp we call the convergence all these forums are so that the Lord showed me that all these forums kama mutu tayari kweli anataka kufuata wezi kusema hauna nafasi because Elijah answered Elisha when Elisha asked you know, when Elijah told Elisha, ask what you want before I go, before I'm taken from you. Elisha went for the big thing. He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. Do you remember? But Elijah gave him conditions. One condition, the first one was, if you see me taken, then you have. But if not, forget it. In other words, Elisha needed to position himself in a place where he's able to see Elijah. The whole matter of fathering has to do with seeing, greeting. The next condition was, this is 2 Kings chapter 2 from verse 9 going down, as they walked and talked, then something from heaven came to separate them. By the way, when people come into serious relationships like this, nothing on the earth can separate them. You say, my whole I heard something about you which was not good. I decided never to call you. No. 
Separations happen because there's a chariot of fire from heaven. Uh, nothing of the earth can separate people that are connected. So, Jipange, Jipange, I will not leave you. Even me, I will not forsake you. I am just here. Are we together? So, as they walked and talked, meaning, and you remember Elijah saying, uh, he is in Gilga and he is going to Bethel. Then he is going to, was it Jericho? Then he is going to Jordan. And every time Elisha said, as long as your soul liveth, huh? so, so, what is so? Seat of emotion, where you make decisions from, your attitudes and everything. In other words, Elisha was saying, whatever decision you make, Elijah, and the choices you make, they are my choices. So if you go to Gilga, I'm there. You go to Bethel, I'm there. You go to Jericho, I'm there. So as they walked and talked. So that's why this forum is here so that you can come. We are talking and walking. Are we together? But I've also said the Young Minister's Forum is not ownership. I don't own you. I said there are no conditions of joining. There's nothing to join actually. It's just an open forum. You are free to come in. And you are free to go out. Nobody will say, you, you used to come. What happened? No, no, no. Then I don't make claims. I'm now your father. I don't make claims. Neither should you make a claim. You are now my father. I'm your son. You know, okay. Some of you are actually, I'm your father. And some of you, you are my sons. But some of you, we have never met since Adam. So I can't make a claim. Are we together? You have a pastor. You have a church. You have a Probably a father. So I'm only an uncle. Who is trying to talk nice in town. But just in case you are relationless. And you're not well placed. And God gives you a divine encounter to follow me. It's up to you. But tell your pastor I'm not a thief. I don't steal sons. You all belong to Jesus. You all belong to the kingdom. If I can say something to bless you and help your ministry... Well and good for you. That's why we are here today. But we are friends, okay? We are not enemies. Amen? Your introduction in Mekwan Zuri. Can you now relax? Tell your neighbor, in case your lung had moved, let it come back to where it's supposed to be. Alright? So today we bless God you are here the whole day. I've also decided to get you lunch. I'm going to feed you today. I'm not charging you for being here. Can you imagine that? It's a blessing. But the way it looks, I will ask for an offering. The way it looks like Kayado Shazaya. I was a kind of cool believer, Buri. I at a injili, injili akuna Buri. So be withdrawing money from the bank. We drew emphasis, saying, "Please, the way Naskia presses up and now gets another one thousand. You know, the way Naskia haya daga shaya bada willingly in your heart." Nobody putting you under pressure. That's how Christianity was supposed to be. Alright? So, uh, those are the protocols for today. Are we together? And uh, to God be the glory for great things he has done. Let's start this engine. It's 10.30. That's good. I'm going to preach up to 4 o'clock, but uh, instead of doing that, I'll have mercy on you. Give you a break when I feel like then give you lunch when it is lunch time. Afternoon, we're going to have a Q&A, uh, question and answer. So during lunch time, you will only ask, answer questions that are written. So you write them, you give them to Pastor Peter uh, or his wife. Uh, she has disappeared to the back because it was very hot here. She's cooling down. So uh, you, you can give those questions and then in the afternoon, uh, we'll be able to <clears throat> answer them. Uh, my panel will also be ready. Praise God. I say to praise God. All right. Can you give everybody this outline? I don't know why I always like giving people free gifts. Jesus. I'm a giver every day. Today I'm giving you one page. No, two pages. Two pages. Now, Leon Metoa. I give every day. <laughs> so, Leo. Nime the print from my own printer in the house the whole night. 
sio photocopy Wani mnapeana kutoka nyuma ninyi asha mliambiwa na nani mwanzage nyuma pasta wako mbele eh anza mbele my sister thank you very much usiwagope mauzo zao wapati anza mbele ili watu wako mbele wao wanajua kweli kuna faida kukaa mbele wanapewa kwanza ninyi mna serve kutoka nyuma lakini mubarikiwe we are just happy we are free in the house of god amen sasa nyinyi mko online niliwaambiaga mkujaga physically sasa hii mtatoa wapi na sio kwa zuma ati tunaweza kushare on the page hapana hii ni ya wale wako physical na tutawaambia ni nini ile mkuje but praise the lord for those in america don't worry you can watch those in asia and different parts of africa to god be the glory let me tell you it's never easy to speak to young ministers let me put it this way it's never easy even to speak to speakers to minister to ministers when i i was meditating praying thinking and saying lord so what will i teach them i don't know you can probably make it easier by asking me questions than i answer however in the new testament we appreciate the leadership of the holy spirit the holy spirit is amazing you ask him a question you know uh, let me just do a commercial break right here before we even start this is passover today is good friday right jesus afikiri sasa ameshikwa ama alilala kwa nani alilala kwa kaifas siju kama amempea breakfast before they take him to the cross ali lalishwa usiku mzima kwa prison ya bishop i priest the legion and backslid and so much that jesus when he was arrested he he was arrested in he was put in high priest house sio kwa city council uh, prison so leo asemekana ndiye atapelekwa msalabani by saa sita atakuwa crucified then atakaa hapo mpaka saa tisa alafu kutatokea giza hiyo masaa matatu paka rocks we riot there will be another quick today munashika ama mshiki sawa so uh, and then i'm also teaching the apostolic house uh, on the general theme on uh, understanding wealth and riches so ikifika passover either waachana na hiyo subject uingie passover alafu uta continue baada but then i yesterday asked the holy spirit so is there any verse that can connect wealth and riches and passover I prayed in tongues for a few minutes. Bang. Then my mind received the verse. So, I want us to read that because it is personal. Then we come back to This is a story within a story. Then I tell you why you have that document in your hands. Romans 8:31 and 32. This is what the Bible says. We gonna divine speed kijana kijana wa Yesu. The Bible says in Romans 8 verse 30 that he wanted to maybe somebody can help. Thank you Jesus. Who then sh- what then shall we say to these things? Let's try to say something to these things. What shall we say? If God is for us, who can be against us? Okay, that one has nothing to do with Passover, but that's where we begin. Say God is for me. He who did not spare wewe umepotea Hii inahitaji ingi constitution ya level nyingine ili ulikuwa mtoto wa pastor Wewe ni graduate graduate sana wa pastor alikuwa pale Wewe ni first born glory to God Everybody read He who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things we umeenda wapi tunasoma that tuna uko that three umebarikiwa sana nyinyi ni watu wakubwa glory to god he will give us freely all things look he did not spare jesus he allowed him to go to the cross he delivered him to us if he gave us his only son what would stop him now for giving us these other little things and i tell you he assures us he will give us freely So his death on the cross opened up the opportunity 
for us now to receive from God. All things. Amen. So I, I, I was saying that because the Holy Spirit in Yokolea and in his idea, Kapata Mwelkeo. What happens is you keep reading scripture, storing up in your spirit, in your subconscious, so that when you ask God for solutions of the problems there are, He will pick from your store. Some of you have nothing in the store. Elisha. You pick from your store. So, and God gave me the grace that when I read something and meditate on it, I don't lose it. I don't lose it. Na mimi taumbea yo grace mpate. Hii kila wakati unasawa. Yo vaziri kwa wapi, unajisikraji kichwa, na umeokoka. Kwa wapi. May God give you the grace not to forget. If you know how much you have on the Mpesa, then you can know scriptures. Praise the Lord. So I asked the Lord, so what do we do with the Young Ministers Forum? Then the Holy Spirit reminded me something that happened to me when I was 33 years old. This is what happened. When I was 33 years old, and I will not tell you when it was, although even if I tell you, it was 1998, May 23rd. I was praying somewhere in 14 falls in Thika, in a house nearby, fasting. Because I had moved from a previous ministry and I was on leave for two months. So I was seeking God, what is next? Then the Lord showed up in the room where I was locking myself at 3 p.m. Light came into the room that was greater than the light outside. I sensed the presence of God so much that I went on my knees and the encounter took a while. And I discovered I had a heavenly visitation. My eyes opened, and that's how I got the revelation to begin Gospel Light Ministries, which birthed Life Church. So, after the encounter, the Holy Spirit led me to study First and Second Timothy. So, then later, I discovered it was my birthday, and I'd forgotten. You know. There are times you don't remember those things because of Jesus. I know your birthday ata unazusha ata unatuwekea number ya mpesa kwa online ukisema leo ni siku yangu. Na hakuna shida na you enjoy yourself. But there are times God will deal with you until mambo yako haukumbuki. You don't remember your own things. So I started read the book of First Timothy and Second Timothy. And then I could tell in the Holy Spirit, anyone who ever want to begin ministry must be conversant with First and Second Timothy. And so, yesterday I read through the six chapters. Then I asked the Holy Spirit, so what? Then I began to see key words. Listen, everything said by Paul to Timothy is good. But the Holy Spirit helped me to identify in the first letter of Timothy 18 key verses and key points that deal with this generation at this time. It's a mixed grill of wisdom that I want to share with you today. Then I envision, let me do an, a quick outline. Uh, the verse and the point, point verse, verse point, just like that, 18 of them. But let me tell you something. I'm going to go deeper in some of those points. So you have your extra notebook space where you can write your own notes. And let's agree. And I believe it. God will do mighty things today. Are we together? Mutu ya sound as kai mbali sana. Ukimwana mahali muambi as kai mbali sana mana kinaza kuhumana anytime. Okay. Akai mahali ama hapa karibu akai shini ili akipata nafasi ya kujump. Sio saa hii after we break. After one hour. Let the Holy Spirit angoja to fundish. But uh, he is here with us. Glory to God. So, I title this to Timothy, my son. And then I edited because some of you are not my sons. Because wisdom is a principal thing. To Timothy, God's son. That's the title of today. You know, I have several principles that have helped me in ministry. 
to keep me safe. I don't know whether it is accurate or not. I usually don't ask people to join our ministry. I don't use money to get people in. I don't lure them to join us. I don't uh, give them carrot so that they can see this is where they need to be. No, I don't do that because if I do that, I've sold a seed. After three years, somebody else will come and fish from here and go with our people. I mean, Jesus' people. So I like, let everybody be where Jesus wants them to be. We just provide the opportunity. It's up to you to make decisions. Are we together? So that's why I can't put the title to Timothy, my son, because Sasa, uh, that's a little deeper. But uh, if, if you are my son, like Otas, it's our, but don't cancel God's name because that's God. So, Grace, mercy, and peace. Let me explain with other verses. Here, scripture says to Timothy, a true son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, why those three words? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 1. I told you the engine is running. As soon as the engine begins to run, what happens? Verses begin to open up everywhere. I want you to look at verse 3 of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. How Paul greets the Corinthians. He says, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Let's see how he greets them the second time. The same way, verse 2 of chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Go to the next book, which is Galatians chapter 1 verse 3. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. What is the next book? The book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 2. Grace to to you and a peace from God our Father. What am I saying with the two or three witnesses a matter is established? To the Philippians is the same in verse 2. Grace and peace. To the Colossians is the same in verse 2. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. To the Thessalonians is the same. Grace and peace to you. Even the second Thessalonian. Now, but when it gets to his true son. He adds another word. Mercy. Every young minister needs God's mercies. Mercy. 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 Oh Lord. Young people have levels of foolishness. That's why they need mercy. When we were younger we did foolish things in the ministry. But God still moved. Oh yes. One day I was ministering in Nyeri in a tent meeting, 94, April, Passover, like now. And then uh, the church in the area came to stop the meeting, the elders, because we were anointing people with the oil. Those days we believed we have to touch you with the oil for you to fall. And we were young and uh, God was moving. People are being filled with the Holy Ghost, no doubt. And so one elder approached me, trying to talk to me. And I'm in the middle of uh, praying for people. I told him, wait. I told the one who was before me, lift your hands. Touch a kanguka. Uh, wait, Muse. Uh, lift your hand. Touch a kanguka. Muse, wait. You know, I was ignoring the Muse. I wanted him to see the power of God. You know, lift your hand. The Akaona says, I'm coming to him. Akafikira and Tamambia lift your Akachana na Mimi. You see, it was foolish. But God was moving. That's why I needed God's mercy. I pray for you. All the messes you have done. May the mercy of God come upon you. Because God still has a future with you. He still loves you. He wants to use you. Although you are a little bit foolish. There are some things you make mistakes. There are things we don't know what to do. But God's mercy is available. Okay. You say, well, maybe that was just Timothy. Even the second letter. Chapter 2 Timothy 1-2. Grace, mercy, and peace. When he also writes to Titus 1, verse 4. 
to Titus, a true son in our common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God. For young people, give them mercy. And point number one. That point has come in so quickly. It's very powerful. May God show you mercy. You have shown me mercy. Mercy said no. Don't I want to let you go? Don't I want you to sleep away? You don't have to be a friend. Are we together? I declare. My sister, may we receive mercy? Yeah. The way we have handled fiancés and boyfriends before. You need mercy. The way, young man, you have tried to lie to that lady, engage that lady. You said you will marry her. You have never in seven years. You need mercy. Young people, you need mercy. Your point is in I'm Oh Lord. Pastor Francis. Don't you think they need mercy? We all need mercy because sometimes some of the decisions we make are not good decisions. But God still overlooks in the days of your ignorance. Glory to God. Right. So that's a major verse I never want you to forget. We need God's mercy. If it were not for his mercies, we would be consumed. We would not be here. We would be lost. Hello? We would be finished. If it was not God's mercy. Even me, I would not be preaching. You think for 41 years, I've never done strange things. I'm not saying sinning, drinking, you know, uh, carousing, being the club, party after party. No, 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 no. I got saved at nine years. Although by that time I was drinking. So. Another day. And Jesus saved me. When you are born in a brewery, what would you expect? Whew. I found another verse 12 and 13. That is amazing as God speaks to the younger generation. And then later in the afternoon, I'll show you that there is a progression in those 18 points. I was amazed. It's a progression. God shows us mercy. Number two, he puts us into ministry though we have a past. Huh. He says, I thank, verse 12, First Timothy 1, 12, and I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me, this is Paul saying, because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. That's a very strong statement, putting me into the ministry. Verse, next verse says, Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. So God puts people into ministry though they have a past, a strange past. Do you also have a past? And how come then God has put you into ministry? Because he has showed us mercy. This, let me minister to you by the spirit. If you are still being troubled by your past, let it shut down today. Let me say that again. If you are still being troubled in your mind, by your past sins, past mistakes, but you humbled yourself before God, he forgave you, he washed you with his red blood. Huh? He has put you into ministry. May you not remember your past anymore. 
may God completely do a new thing in your life. Are you listening to me? And so, all the voices of your past, whether the past involves you or your parents, you want to raise properly. You want loved by your father. You want loved by your mother. Therefore, you behave in a certain way and therefore you cause troubles here and there or you end up being so angry for nothing. You are a very angry person generally. If even in the team, probably a small group, maybe ushering team, worship team, whatever team you are in, whichever ministry you are in, and then somebody does something little, you, you get angry earlier and faster than anybody else because you have roots. There are still things in your past. God places people in ministry although they have a strange past because he has shown us mercy. What we need to do is this. Do not dwell on the past for God will do a new thing. Are you familiar with that verse of Isaiah 43? Verse 18. The Bible says in Isaiah 43 verse 18. If we can get into that verse, glory to God. Everybody read with me. One, two, go. I can't hear you well. Do not remember the former things. No, consider the things of old. Notice, Goja, notice things of the old. These are many, plural. How many? Many things. Things of old. But then the next verse says, Behold, I will do a new thing and it shall spring forth. Now, the new thing will override all the old things. Just one new thing that God will do will sort all the old things. May God do just one thing in my life. Just one thing. Just one thing that will shut down the system of the past. Glory to God in the highest. So, San Timothy. San Timothy. San Timothy. You have a past. But God has put you in the ministry. That phrase, put you in ministry, or put, putting me in ministry, Paul is saying, uh, we'll clarify it in the next uh, points. So these are dimensions of wisdom for this generation. Are we together? Now, being put in ministry is a process. Because if he was a persecutor, a blasphemer, he was an evil man. He needed an encounter to shift him. On the road to Damascus, he was changed. You also need your Damascus experience. Yeah. Got to be born again. And then from there, you have to be discipled to fall in the hands of a Barnabas. Fall into the hands of somebody who will show you. Scripture says, Barnabas and so. Barnabas and so before it becomes Paul and Barnabas. Yeah. Barnabas and so. In Acts 13, when he is now, uh, in Acts 11 actually, verses 24, uh, 25, uh, when Barnabas came to Antioch, he was a good man full of the Holy Ghost, and you know, when he came, many people in Antioch were added to the Lord. Uh, so then, Barnabas departed to Tarsus to seek for who? So, not Paul. To seek for so. Mm. And the next verse says, then he brought him, when he found him, brought him to Antioch. Then they stayed a whole year, assembling with the church. Then great things began to happen. Until for the first time, the move of God was so great, for the first time, the people of the way, the disciples were referred to as Christians. For the first time. Now, if you jump to chapter 13 of Acts of the Apostles, uh, you'll find these prophets and teachers, they are all gathered in this church, and you can see their names. Who is the first one? Barnabas, Diana Taj, or Kwanza. Who has been mentioned last? So. Because you came the other day. There are usually protocols of how people are even mentioned. Hello? 
go to even the 12 disciples. They are not just mentioned haphazardly. These are ranking and a protocol. Go to Matthew 10. Although you are seated, you must go there now. Matthew 10 verse 1. You hear the 12 disciples. They came to him. Then he gave them power of unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sicknesses and diseases. Now, the names of the 12 apostles are these. Fast. The word fast is a word for proton. 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 Fast in rank. Fast in time. Fast in order. So even among the 12, kuna mutu atatajwa kwanza. Also called Peter. Mbia mwenzako utatajwa ato kama number 5. Usijali. Bora tuko kwa list. Bora tuko kwa list. Are we together? The day God will give you your place of authority and place of influence, utapanda panda to number 2. Then finally number one. You see, I used to be in a ministry from 1986 to 1999. Nine. I was number Ugo Chini. I kept going up in rank until one time I was appointed that ministry to be the youth director. So among the young guys, I was their director. But uh, the board, the national board was those, those great elders who preached the gospel for a long time. So uh, then I was admitted in the national board representing the youth. I've been a youth winger. I've represented the youth. So, uh, but because of gift, grace, favor, I found myself rising when I went to the big crusades. I will be number two. Meaning what? The man of God would preach, give me the mic to pray for people to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh yes. I remember my charcoals, 1993 gospel crusade in town behind Titote. Mm. Titot, Kazuzaya. Man of God preached, I was fire. Then, guess what? I was given the mic to pray. And then the Anglican bishop of those days in the diocese of Machakos, you know, the, the great man of God, a bishop, you know, Zimbi, great man, decided to usher. A whole Anglican bishop was ushering. And a little boy looking emaciated and thin and strange with a deep voice say, receive. <laughs> and then I saw people falling like maize and the archbishop was helping. Just by mercy and favor. Are we together? So, Paul is saying, he, Christ put me in the ministry. And I said, there's a process of getting to ministry and there are different levels. Right now, in a, you are in a certain level. Even if it cannot be named. Huh? You are not secretary of that team. You are not in the committee. You are not even among the youth department. There's no department of young ministers in your church. So, you are just an active brother, an active sister. Somewhere once in a while you go for missions without telling anybody. But we thank God for you. You are, you are begun somewhere. You are on your way up. Just make sure you keep going up until you enter heaven. Because some of you are on your way up and you may digress and divert. Then you end up in hell. Make sure as you pursue ministry. Uh, going up. Bottom up. All the way until you make it. Don't lose your faith because of money. Don't lose your faith because of troubles. Don't lose your faith because of people lacking, you know, people fighting you. You know, Kenyans have this tendency that, uh, uh, you know, everybody is trying to fight me. Well, and it's, that means then, then they are going somewhere. Because, by the way, only those who are going somewhere are fought. But make sure fights, attacks, whether witchcraft, whether demonic, whether your own mistakes. Because many times we blame others, but even us. Ay, others is to say makitu. Tunge kufa hivyo tukio tumenyamaza. One time you need to be a lamp when there are problems. Other times you need to be a lion. Many of you are lions throughout. Fighting for your destiny. <laughs> Sometimes you don't need to say nothing. Just be a lamb. Like Jesus, taken to the slaughter, a sheep before its shearers. He opened not his mouth. 
There are times you don't need to answer everybody. Just shut your mouth and keep moving forward. So being put in ministry is a process. Timothy, begin somewhere. Begin somewhere. So, that's number two. Though they have a past. Number three, First Timothy 1 18. I, I am just saying I found these 18 verses in these six chapters to be such great lessons, dimensions, principles, key things that would help our generation. This charge I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. So prophecy and divine encounters give you a foundation in ministry. Let's go. What is prophecy? It's a word from God specifically designed for you and spoken to you. We all know prophecy is a gift of the spirit. So it's the Holy Spirit using somebody with a channel, a gift to communicate God's mind to you. For those who have been in probably ministries and churches don't believe in prophecy, maybe nobody has ever prophesied to you, but Kenyans know how to interact with other ministries and ministers. So I'm sure 99% of you have already a personal prophecy in the past. Anybody here who has ever received a prophetic word before? Let me see your hand. You have ever received a prophetic word before? I was looking for those who did not, so I wonder how we can organize today. Yeah? We can just maybe say, Lord, I know you are the one who decides what's going to happen. Do you have anything to say about this daughter of Zion and this son? And we pray in tongues. We wait. You never know. He may say or not say. He said that one I have told that many times. So I'm not speaking again. So don't put pressure on the prophets to say things because first of all you have 66 books of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. All that is the spirit of prophecy. What did you do with it? Yeah. Prophets from downtown. What have you done from the word from up heaven? What have you done with the written word before you push me and uh, Apostle Hadassah in the new show on Elevate TV, a School of the Prophets? And somebody already said we are magicians. We forgive them for they do not know. Today is Good Friday. Today is the day to forgive them. Jesus said on the cross, forgive them. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are saying. They are trying to say I'm a magician. Francis, do I look like a magician? Have I ever cast anybody? No. But anyway, that's their opinion. And uh, it's a very good sign that that's a good show. I like problems. Glory to God. You know, those hindrances are signs. There's something good the enemy is trying to resist. But just in case we are magicians, we shall get saved and repent. We shall repent. I can assure you that the devil is a liar. And that looks like also a liar. So, Timothy, previous encounters like prophecy, divine visitation, Holy Spirit speaking to you directly, these encounters are a strong foundation for your ministry. Listen, in 1 Samuel chapter 30, the Bible talks about David at Ziklag with the family and the people coming on an attack when they were out, they came back, found the Ziklag burnt with the fire. Do you remember? I know you are not there, but you are saying yes. So I think either you are on the David side or you are on the Raiders side. But you remember Ziklag. <laughs> and when David came, he was so discouraged. The men finding their children gone and their wives. The one saying, David... Sasa, ini vita gani umetuingiza kwayo baka watoto wetu wamechukuliwa? 
So they wanted to stone David, the Bible says. And then the Bible says that David ended up encouraging himself in the Lord or strengthening himself in the Lord. Initially, I was not understanding that verse. I was saying, if you are weak, how can you strengthen yourself in the first place? I thought it's a discouraged person who needs another person to come and encourage them. Like today, I'm an encourager. All the discouraged people in ministry today, by the time this thing is over, you'll be as strong and as bold as a lion. I can assure you, today we are barring discouragement. It's not possible to come to the apostolic house and you are discouraged. Today you will be built up and encouraged in Jesus' mighty name. So he encouraged himself in the Lord. Now, so I asked the Lord, what does that mean to encourage yourself? And then the Lord told me two things. He said, this is how you encourage yourself. One, by remembering how you got saved. Wow. The divine encounters you had and some of the scriptures you heard when you got saved. Remembering that, it makes your hair grow again. Number two, by remembering the words he spoke to you or the prophecy he gave you that put you in ministry. How you received your call. When you remember that, hey, the spirit of discouragement cannot hang on you anymore your strength will begin to come back. Amen. So, prophecy and divine encounters give you a very strong foundation in ministry. I think one of the things I can do is give you testimony. And I've, I think most of you have heard all my testimonies, so I don't have new testimonies. But let me try. I was in A-Levels as a chairman of the Christian Union. And do you know A-Levels? You are to 84 form. When you are A-Levels, the old uh, system of education, we would go to form 1 to form 4. You pass. Some, those who pass well, are admitted in uh, advanced uh, level A-Levels, two years. Then from there, if they pass, they go to the university. Okay? So, uh, A-Levels was for seniors and it was really mature people, I believe. It was, it was a better system than this one. This one, CBC looks hacked. So, uh, but anyway, things keep on changing. So at A-Levels, I was the games captain of the whole school. 1,200 students was a national school. I was also the chairman of the Christian Union. I was also a member of the students council that works with the principal. Kind of, I've always been near power. I don't know why. So this day, we had mobilized a high school rally with other Christian unions in the region uh, and uh, they came, many of them, 19 schools that time, 1987. Do I look like Mutu as a man if you're quitting? So, but we had been praying six months before something used to call UPM, Underground Prayer Movement. It was illegal to pray in our school. And we already heard the story how I was suspended from school two weeks because of being caught with the students praying in the morning very early at five morning glory. We have suffered for Jesus. Anyway, but that secret prayer produced a revival in our school. Half of the school was saved. You should have seen 600 young people in uniform lifting hands in the school assembly full of the Holy Ghost. One time I preached and there was a move of God and there was a miracle, a creative miracle. Somebody, a student had teeth problems for four years. The gum had become black. As I prayed, the gum turned red on the spot and the teeth got strong. An Indian lady from Buddhism got saved and there was a riot. There was a move of God. God was using us. But anyway, that's another story. Let me go to the main story. So here we are in this rally. We invite a guest. He didn't come. As we used to sit in front. Officials always sit in front. Those days we were always like this. If preacher doesn't come, my God, I still have a verse. How many of you know what I'm saying? I'm ready anytime. 
Lord. So the preacher did not come. But he sent somebody. And the person who was sent was gracious. He preached about the blood of Jesus. It was powerful. 25 minutes as you remember. Then the CEO patron. Who was a national evangelist already. Was given to come and make an article. Hundreds of students came forward to be saved. So seated as standing here as an official looking at all the heads of these students gets his, and the head of the man of God who was very tall teacher Swahili teacher you know full of the Holy Ghost and he was ministering there was a cloud I saw like the lights were dimmed in the hall there was such glory then a voice of God told me this is what I want you to be doing in life I'm still doing it even today, kuo koesha, kujazisha Holy Ghost, who preach, who demonstrate the power of God. And now we are mentoring this generation so that even you can have your own divine encounters and your life can begin and your future is secure. Praise the Lord. So, divine encounters. So, Paul is telling Timothy, we encountered you before. And there are two scriptures that shows how Timothy got it. Chapter 4, verse 14. First Timothy 4, 14. He tells him not to neglect this gift. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Now, other version will say presbytery. Presbytery is a, a five-fold ministry uh, team that comes to surround somebody who is being put into ministry they lay hands on you they pray over you and also prophesy to you that's proper ordination by the way commissioning and ordination is never supposed to be done by one person i know religious and traditional is done by one person but biblical accurate apostolic prophetic ways of doing ordination or commissioning and i prefer commissioning is by eldership presbytery the five prophecies until Makamasi in Anza Kutoka. Sababu, you are surrounded. Huh. Second Timothy 1 6. The Bible says, Therefore, I remind you, Timothy need to be reminded, to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. So, in the presbytery, Paul was leading that presbytery. His hand was on top of the head of Timothy. And when he laid down on him, there are things Timothy did not receive, but there are things he received. One of the things he did not receive is in the next verse. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. So when they laid hands on him, he did not receive a spirit of fear. But there are some things he received. What? He received the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Why sound mind? I'm hearing the Holy Spirit give me an interpretation. Sound mind because Timothy used to have a stomach problem. Until one day he was told to take a little wine for the sake of his stomach. But I know nobody here has a stomach problem. And these days we have antibiotics, not wine. That was medicinal then. Nikushike ukikunywa wine hapo kisema uko na shinda tumbo. And that is because of thinking too much. Stress. The young man had a low self esteem. In 1 Timothy 4, 12, he says, let no one despise your youth. He was only having problems with people's opinions. It was eating on his stomach. That's why during commissioning, Karazataya, God had to give him the spirit of sound mind to deal with the mind so that there can be peace, mercy, grace upon his head so that he can relax. Some of you, the problems you're having is not the devil. It is your own problems inside because of upbringing, association, parenting, and so forth. I pray that God will give you a spirit, an anointing that will cover you. 
that will cover you. I said an anointing that will cover your weaknesses. So that when you are weak, you can say, I am strong. Glory to God. Mome, she got your point. Hey. So. Divine encounters. Somebody say divine encounters. So you need your own personal divine encounters. I have quite a number of them I've heard over the years. Um, one time, 1988, I was... I locked myself in a house for three days. No, for one day. Because I was invited to preach in Moy University. I just finished A levels. So Mutua from six kwenda kubiria university, you feel intimidated. I was invited to preach the university in nineteen eighty eight. So I decided to lock myself in Kirogoya. The house. I locked myself praying, saying, Jesus, you appear to me before I go. Come yourself, don't send anybody. Just show up. Have you ever prayed that kind of prayer? So uh, that's what I was doing. So I began in the morning praying. To do, I told somebody to lock and go with the keys so that I'm not tempted to go. Tempted to go. So I was praying, praying. All the hymns I've sung, all the songs, uh, all the prayers. And I looked at my watch. I saw it was 10 in the morning. Surely. Continued, pushed, prayed, pushed, pushed. At around three o'clock, something happened. I like three o'clock. I like three p.m. It's the same hour. Elijah at the diocese of Mount Carmel East with 400 prophets of Baal. Aliambia those prophets. You can do all your prayers in the morning. Sasita, sasaba. But when it gets to 2.30. Umarizana mambie. And that's my advice even for government. If we have to have a national event and all religious groups are praying. At our Masai. Ombeni. But by 3 o'clock. Munaleta kameme. You hand over the mic. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. You can pray all your prayers. No problem. Because we are a country of many religions. But when it gets to three o'clock. When it gets when? Elijah prayed at three o'clock. Come and sit on this side. Don't sit there. Elijah prayed on three o'clock. What happened at three o'clock? Fire. Fell. It's three o'clock. It's the same hour. That Jesus was on the cross. And he said, it is finished. He did not say, I am finished. <laughs> he said, it is finished. It's the same hour. Peter and John were going to pray at the hour of prayer. And they found a man at the gate beautiful. So when it goes three o'clock for me. Threatening God, come here. I felt the presence. The presence was like the way you can increase volume. So the presence was intensifying and I was getting uncomfortable. So, increase. It reached a moment I thought I'm suffocating here now. Uh, open windows, open doors. I tried to hide myself. Things were, and the, 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 the intensity was still increasing. You know what I did? I was down on the floor. It increased. I don't know what I was saying now or crying or whatever. When it, then it was withdrawn. You know where I found myself? Trying to go under the sofa set. I said, please don't come like that. Next time, just come slowly or whatever. It was an encounter. Then I traveled to Moy University. Pastor Gigi was there in charge of missions in the Christian Union, so he's the one who did connection. Don't think you preach in, uh, in Europe at a, a stranger who just invite you. No. You have to be introduced by somebody. That's why you should be loving people, respecting people, honoring people who have gone, buying them tea, you know, being friend, friendly, because that way, God uses people 
even to give you money. Money is in central bank, but the money you need is not there. You try to go there with a placard. I want the money. Nobody will give you. Money is the one which is circulating around people. Love people. That's where your money is. Sorry for using money as an example when I'm talking about divine encounter. Are we together? I had been given a topic in the university. Prayer and fasting. I don't know why university people like topics. They already know what God wants to say. Then they give you a summary of the points. So I say, if already you know the message and you have the scriptures and the points, why do you need a speaker? Then you give 45 minutes. Anyway, no problem. I taught on fasting. Then I spared five minutes. Because I'm not a lecturer. They have lecturers in the university. Me, me I'm a kayaza. I adosho satire. They can change ujumbe raka raka. I began telling them how Jesus loves them and he wants them saved and he wants to touch them and fill them with the Holy Ghost, a power of God. Oh, the heat changed. I told them, stand up on your feet. They lifted up their hands. I began to hear noise. <sighs> students were falling by themselves. Chairs, these student chairs were scratching the ground. And people falling everywhere. They told me since the university and started, there's no meeting that seen move of God like that. Why? Because of a divine encounter. You need a divine encounter. It's never easy to survive in ministry anywhere, whether in the city, in their suburbs, in small towns or big towns. It's never easy to survive in ministry. The devil has his infrastructure everywhere. What helps us to stand constantly? Is the foundation God has laid in our lives moment. The greatest thing you need to be doing as a young minister is to seek God. Because a day will come. Now it's time to fast, to pray. A day will come. Even your health will not allow you to fast. Yeah. Utafika miaka fulani. Wezi kufanya 40 days. Ata 3 days uwezi. Unafanya mchana, jioni unakunywa kitu. Kwa sababu mwili yako... It is a mechanic on a Wear and tear. Fast now. Accumulate enough strength so that utakuria imaombi when you grow older. Unaskia, don't push elders. Why is this elder not fasting for the days, for the nights? Where? He's another vessel. Carrying glory. He did that years ago. Of course, it needs to be a constant walking with God. But there are moments when your body can't take it anymore. Is that teaching correct? Or I'm teaching you bad manners? Praise God. So, this scripture verse 18 of 1 Timothy these previous prophecies use them to wage a good warfare. In other words, when you are considering the weapons of our warfare, which are mighty in God, for doing what? For pulling down strongholds. Paul shared six to the Ephesians. You can add the seventh one. Previous prophecy. It's a weapon. You're telling the devil, God told me, he is taking me to the nations. So I command that visa to be released in the name of Jesus Christ. Because when you have this skin, this chocolate skin, you are disadvantaged when it comes to visas. New query. One time a certain mega nation denied me a visa. I had been there six, I think, or seven times. The eighth time, they refused to give me visa. And I'm not broken, no law. And I left the embassy. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Go east. <laughs> so I stopped going west. And for 14 years, I never stepped into that nation. Because God said what? Go east. That's how I began going to Pakistan, in Australia, and India, and so forth. So, then one time, the Lord spoke to me. And I saw a minister in that nation 
doing the Macedonian call. He was saying, I hear you preach for so so. Come and preach to us in our city. I told my wife, that nation is calling again. But in my spirit, I did not want to go through the trauma of being denied a visa. I said, I'm not going. Once an hour later, Corona came. I said, good riddance. Nobody can go nowhere. But after COVID, the Lord spoke to me again in a dream. I'm a dreamer. And he showed me all my papers for that nation. Bang, 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 had been stamped. I said, Lord, this thing is back. So I said in my spirit, okay, Lord, I'm now ready to go when it is. But nobody's inviting me. Nobody. So how do you? Because you need a letter to show who may Are we together? After two weeks, I got a call from another nation, different nation. Somebody telling me, we have searched you out. We know what you carry. We think you should be in this organization. You should represent your nation. And so we're sending you a letter. We want you to come in about four months, uh, be in this conference. They sent me a letter. It disappeared. After a month, they asked me, did you get the visa? I said, which visa? Did you even send me the letter? He said, we sent. He said, I never saw it. They sent again. In that nation, when you applied for visa, they were throwing people into 2023. And this is 2021. You almost get into know which country I'm talking about. I don't want to mention them because they don't pay me. So, so, we applied. And guess what? They gave me interview in one month. Because when it is time, and then my at the back of my store of my mind subconscious, I'm still remembering the bad things they did. So I'm saying I don't want to go there and answer Kuni break around. So God had mercy on me. He showed me in a dream the questions that were asked me. So I hacked into the system by the grace of God. Hey, I was so happy. Then the Lord showed me, one of the questions to ask, to ask me is where I've been traveling. So you know what I did on that day? I carried all my old passports. A bunch like this. So as soon as I stood on the window and um, they're asking me, uh, what do you do and where are you going? Meanwhile, I'm removing my letter to show where I'm going. I was, first of all, removed my many passports and placed them there as a heap. The guy looked, I said, can, can, I, can I see those? So he said, hey, Shayata, all this nation. He said, you have the visa. <laughs> Using prophecy, previous, and this prophecy word doesn't have to come from somebody else. It can also be previous what God has given you. So be walking with God that you normally hear from God. That's your survival kit because the world is unfair. And the world will never support you. The devil will never become a partner of your ministry. He will actually even stir up some of your friend enemies. To fight you. It's good by the way for you to be fought. So that you can test what you carry. Did you hear what I say? So praise God almighty. Use previous words to press ahead press ahead glory to God number four this one is good verse chapter 2 verse 7 first Timothy chapter 2 verse 7 let me read 6 and 7 for the purpose of that sentence first Timothy Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Seven, for which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am speaking the truth in Christ and not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. There are three gifts, ministries that are recorded by Paul in that verse. That is very amazing. One, preacher. Two, apostle. Three, teacher. Amazing. All in one person. So the point is, 
use all your gifts from God. This young minister, use all your gifts. Glory to God. Use all your gifts from God. If you are a preacher, preach. If you are an apostle, do the ministry of leadership and fathering and pioneering and trailblazing and all the uh, uh, apostolos dimension of that ministry. And then, then as a teacher, break down the word of God through the spirit of revelation. Uh, receive revelation from God. So use all your gifts. Let me tell you, the parable in Matthew 25, somebody was given five talents, another one two talents, another one talent. In other words, everybody was given something. Even if you're only given one, it is anointed enough to change the world. <laughs> Glory to God. If you think of Pastor Benny, we always think about him as a man with a healing gift. Praise God. He just sings, worships, and you're not here. I'm now about to release healing. I'll count seven times. By the seventh time, take up your mat and walk. No, he's just singing. He's just worshiping. And you say, Jesus is here. The Lord is now here. Healing. Uh, let's hear all those who have received uh, healings. You, what time did they receive healing? One gift. So don't underestimate your one gift. By the way, it looks most of you here have many gifts. Oh, yes. Ask your name. Is social media account a gift? Because that's where you spend most of your time. Uh, is that a gift? <laughs> how many gifts are there in the New Testament? Do you know how many gifts are there in the New Testament? There are 25. Surely, of the 25 West Coast of Moja. There are five of Jesus, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. There are nine of the spirit, from word of wisdom all the way to interpretation of tongues. Those are five plus nine. Huh? Fourteen. There are seven gifts of the father in Romans 12, verse 6 to 8. Mercy, giving, leading, all these motivation gives encouragement. Clothing prophecy at another angle. There are seven. So 14 plus seven, 21. Then if you read Romans 12, you'll find a few others like hospitality. You read the letters of First Corinthians chapter 7, you find another celibacy. Kutooa. Kukatazo kuoa kutoka mbinguni. Wengine enu hapo amajapewa yo. <laughs> so there are many gifts. Go look for them. But ah, use all the gifts. There's a prophet I follow a lot. That's where I draw my prophetic the prophet Bill Hammond. One time he said that Jesus took him to heaven. And took him to a place looking like a go down. And there were like mailboxes, gifts wrappings, gifts wrapped with the names. And he was asking Jesus, What are these here? And the Lord said, These are gifts that were released to the saints on earth, but they never received them. They were returned. Please use all your gifts. I think the next prayer I should be praying this week going forward is, Lord, is there another gift that probably you gave me I haven't activated? And that's why those prophets and leaders and fathers began to define simple words like activation. What is to activate? Huh? Is to stir up, to steer up, is to put to flame dormant gifts. And Timothy was in the process of almost neglecting his own gift. In fact, Wilhelmon has taught nine commands given concerning gifts. And I've taught it sometime in the lunch of under thank God because we keep learning from these guys. 
do not neglect, you know, neglect not, despise not, you know, covet. Yeah. And prophecy, by the way, is the only one you're supposed to covet. Covetousness is only allowed when you convert, converting prophecy. There are nine commands. So, they defined activation, to activate, make alive, bring to action the gifts you have. As a young minister, use all your gifts. Even as an old minister, use all your gifts. Now, uh, Caleb discovered uh, he could take a mountain when he was 85. Some of you are not even half his age. Give me this mountain. There was a prophecy given to me by Moses when I was 40. It has delayed for 45 years. But now I feel as strong as I was then to go in and out. I want to take this mountain which used to be Kijad Arba. It's going to become Hebron. This is the same place where Abram in one of the mountains of Moriah had sacrificed his son Isaac. It's the same place that shall become Golgotha. Where Jesus on a day like today will be nailed on that place. Caleb redeemed the old Kijad Arba. He became, it became Hebron. <laughs> I've tried to summarize the Old Testament. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Use all your gifts. It's possible to bury your gift. Unfortunately, if you bury your gift, the same thing this father our father spoke to the man who had one gift. Will be said to you, you wicked, slothful servant. You did nothing with the gift. Some are not even gifts. Call them activities. Call them manifestations. Don't be caught up with just the word gift. They are activities. You can do business activities and they will give you wealth. Though you have graces and gifts in other areas are we together so explore i like the word exploring your gifts when we were younger we used to have seminars for young people and there used to be this topic discovering your gift it was very common number two topic uh relationships you know those are tired topics we we did them <laughs> jesus so one time in one of the camps, we had to change the titles to make it juicy. How to get, how to be gotten, you know, was a topic. You have to use wisdom. Thank you, Jesus. So one time I was teaching on discovering your gift. I said, no, you just don't stumble on it like you have discovered Mount Kenya. Uh, explore. In other words, begin the journey to follow gifted people, begin the journey to be available to be a fat Christian. We used to be told fat. Unene. Faithful, available, teachable. So, if you are fat, if you are faithful, available, teachable, just follow the church. Be active. Ukienda choir, choir master, seme sauti yako nimbaya. Your key is not any of the ones we know. Yours is key Q. Don't get angry. Try intercession. Join the intercessor group. If you find a haushiki, viro wanaomba, enda kwa class ya discipleship, jazz wa kwanza, you are exploring. Try ushering. Try to smile at people. Then one time you have so many problems yourself. You are even you cannot even usher because you have no smile. Because that means it requires grace of smiling and being kujifanya too. You know, si kujifanya. Ni grace. <laughs> if you are the one greeting people come into the house and you look so gloomy, you are making it easy for the man of God to preach. I read a book. That was describing the fivefold ministry. And it got lost in the house of brethren. That book went on the chapters was talking about apostles and leaders. He said, a leader must smile even when things are not good. The pastor should not show the church that he is lost that day. He should wear the grace of God to smile, then go and cry later. If it has not happened to you, it's on the way. No, ni vizuri kuambia ukweli mapema. Sometimes things are bad. 
For no reason. The devil likes attacking men of God on Saturday and Monday. Those are dangerous days. And you can guess why. Why does the enemy attack pastors Saturday and Monday? Ten marks. Discuss. Because of tomorrow. The enemy is trying to disrupt you so that you don't prepare for tomorrow. All of a sudden, the child is being hit by the stool, you know, so that you are in the clinic the whole day. The dog has beaten the cat. The cat has drunk the milk. The baby is now crying. You know, there's no other money. Oh, Jesus. There are a lot of troubles. You know, then you wake up Sunday morning and uh, your husband man says, I'm not going to church. And you are the woman pastor. What will you do? You have to encourage yourself in the Lord. You are the one with the message. Take the message to church. Those who have no message, watch our kai kai on goje kwanza. And you smile that day. How many of you believe all things are well? <laughs> you are helping people to be well. Tell your neighbor, use all your gifts. <laughs> Even the gift of smiling. Is that good? Let's take a short pause for those that are watching online we thank god for you what a blessing we believe you're getting impacted we're gonna take a 15 minutes break so we'll ask our media team let me pray for you before you go so that we can take a short break father i thank you for god's people that are online i pray the grace that is here flowing let it touch the people online in the name of jesus even the ones that are here in the house i pray the power of god the presence of god the glory of the lord be released in a mighty way thank you for the spirit of grace here today we will never be the same again thank you heavenly father for this session one glory to god in the highest in jesus name we pray clap your hands if you bless the lord hallelujah stand upon your feet and stretch uh, 